This week on Sport Fishing, it's part two of our adventure down the East Cape with Katie. In last week's episode, you saw us grant Katie's last wish. She was able to catch the striped marlin all by herself. Well, this week we're back down there fishing offshore again, and we have her brother and sister with us. Afterwards, we help a nonprofit release hundreds and hundreds of little baby sea turtles. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. That's a nice vermilion right there. Yeah, this is what fish is like. I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. explain what's going on here, how the rods are laid out. We're uh, looking for marlin and we're going to be trolling. So there's lots of different ways to set up the rigs, but down here in Baja, it's pretty basic. What the guys like to do on the far outside with the outriggers, they'll have a rod that's way back. Then in close, we'll put a bigger lure like a Zucker 5.5 or 7.5 for the bigger marlin, the stripers. In the middle, they're going to put this, the ballyhoo. It's going to be way in the back. They call that a stinger rig. It's way, way back there. And that's the bait that usually the stripers and the sailfish really like to bite, is that stinger rig that's way back there. And then we'll repeat that process on this side. We'll put another lure in close, and then we'll put another lure outside on the outrigger. And sometimes what will happen is uh, fish will come up on the lures, and they won't hit the lures. They'll just come up on lures, look at the lures, and what we like to do is what we call drop back fishing. So when that happens, we'll wind the lures in closer to the boat, and then we'll drop back a live bait, or today we have dead ballyhoo. We'll drop back one of those baits. And normally what happens is the marlin will come up and eat one of those. They get all led up chasing the trolling baits, and then when we drop back a natural bait and they see that, they hit it. So that's the technique that we're gonna be employing right now. It's worked for over 30 years. I've been coming down here. So hopefully we're gonna get a fish here today. That's the plan. So yesterday we were out and we were able to get Katie her very first marlin. She had a great time. She even gave us a couple of thumbs up. She was so happy about it. And we're back out today. And this time we brought um, her brother and her sister with her. So we got Luke, Brenna? We got Brenna too. So this is probably gonna be the Christmas card. Uh oh, we got a, we got a strike, best strike. There he's, he's on there right now. We got one on, we got one on. Yeah, he's right there. There he is, it's way out there. This one's a little bit too mean for her. Yeah, this one's a little big. We need those little ones for her. Okay, come here, Luke. Now you try. Yeah. Just turn the handle. There you go. <laughs> One hand, come on. You wanted to pull on a marlin, this is a marlin. Okay, let me get it, let me get it. Get the rest. <laughs> get the rest? You want to try? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Why are you, why are you doubting me with a ball, maybe? Okay, turn the handle. There you go. Step back a little bit. There you go. Go ahead. Can we ride them? No, we, we do not ride the Marlins. I know you're a bull rider, but. You see them? 
You're doing good, Brenna. <laughs> right in color, right here at the boat. Beautiful Marlin. Yep. Here's the Marlin that we just brought in. It was a little group effort. Started with Katie, she had a little trouble. And then uh, Luke stepped in and then his sister finished it off. Nice, beautiful Marlin. We're gonna go ahead and release it now. There it goes. There he goes. Beautiful Marlin. Congratulations, good job. All right, we got her another Marlin. Brandon did a good job, good job. Woo! All right, let's take a little break from the action here in the beautiful East Cape. And let's go take a look at the hotel, give you a little look at Pombas de Cortez. Nice job. Pombas de Cortez is located in the middle of the East Cape. It's one of the largest resorts in all the region. It's a beautiful hotel started by the Van Warmer family and it's still run by them today. Today the boys run the full operation, it's modernized, it's brand new rooms and it still has a touch of the old tradition of the old hotel. It's located right on the water with gorgeous views. offers several restaurants to dine at and a swim-up bar too. Hotel Pombas de Cortez is also popular for the large fleet of sport fishing boats that they run there. Pombas de Cortez is one of those resorts that lots of anglers like to visit when they're fishing down in the East Cape. So Casey, I know you guys have been dealing with a lot with everything going on. But uh, what does a trip like this do for the family and for her? It brings us closer together and so many memories that if something does happen to Katie, my top priority is to make the best of every moment we are with her. And every day with her is a blessing and a new adventure. Yeah. So we are blessed that you guys had us and that Hunt of a Lifetime did all this for her. And everyone at the hotel and everyone who's pitched in to make her absolute dream come true. Thank you. Yeah, the Van Warmer family really stepped up and they and really help put did. this all up for us. Yes. They even let us go on their personal yacht today. That is amazing. I've never been on their personal yacht. <laughs> <laughs> all for Katie. All for Katie. Yes. They say anything she wanted, they do. So what did Katie say last night about catching that marlin? She's been on cloud nine since she's caught that marlin. She's never stopped smiling. Oh yeah? Yes, sir. So now she's going to get that marlin mounted and take it home? Yes, sir. You going to put it on your wall? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, we have a little bit more fishing to do. Hopefully we'll get one more. If we get a nice small one, we'll let her bring it in all by herself like she did that very first one. That's but funny. if we get another big one like that one we just had, uh, I'll have to help out. We'll have Luke. Yes, sir. We'll get your daughter in there. That would be wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much. This week in the Tackle Box, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing down here in the East Cape. That's a very special occasion. And this is one of those trips where it really doesn't matter what size fish we catch. The whole thing is about catching that fish and sharing an experience with the kid who's on her last wish. And uh, it's a very special fishing with her today here down the East Cape with Katie. So I just want to share with you some of the tackle that I'm using on this trip. Now, one of the things I like to use is a real, this size, two speed, in case we catch a nice bigger fish. But this is my all around go-to size. I want something with 50, 60 pound test mono, probably 80 to 100 pound spectra below it. And I use this for drop back of fishing. So if we see a marlin come up on the lures and we can bring the lures in so the marlin doesn't strike it, we want to drop back a live bait. And this is the outfit I like to use. A reel this size, nice heavy rod that's designed to fish it. Usually not over seven feet. Just want something to drop the bait back to it and be able to pull on it nice and hard and get that fish to the boat. Now, as far as terminal gear, you don't need a lot of terminal gear, but you need a wide selection because you never know if you're going to be using the small hooks like 1-0s 
and even a size one close to the beach for the rooster fish or if you need a big hook for offshore for the marlin and depending on the size of marlin you might need a really monster hook so this is what I keep with me so it's a big selection of hooks and I have everything from a small hook for sardine fishing um, for the roosters and the cabri and stuff along the beach to a hook big enough that if we decide there's thousand pound marlin around and we're going to bridle hook um, a whole skipjack or a small yellowfin tuna, maybe a five pound bait or a 10 pound bait, we have a hook big enough for that. We have everything in between. This is the only place where I fish where I don't take really thin hooks. I always take at least a triple or a 4X thick hook when I'm fishing offshore in Baja. And that's, it doesn't matter if it's a live bait hook for Dorado or tuna. Again, it's gonna be a heavy hook. It's gonna be a really strong hook. And that's what I take with me. Now, all the packages, the Mustad, you can get them the smaller packages like this. So you can get boxes of 100. Really, a box like this for a weekend trip down in Baja should be plenty. If you're going on a longer trip, like a long range trip, you take those bigger boxes of hooks with you. But this is basically all I take. I take a, a box like this with a wide selection. That way I have hooks, like I said, all the way for small for sardinas along the beach, but there's still going to be two to three X hooks. And then any hook I'm using offshore is a three or four X heavy hook. And I even have hooks like for the hoochies, for the little tuna. Have some swivels too, and that's all the basic gear. My big key though is have selection. Lots of different sizes, lots of different um, possibilities for fishing down there. So you have to have all the different hooks to go with it. You know, most of the boats down there in Baja do have some of the tackle. They do have some leaders, but you know, if you're only gonna go once a year, or this is that trip of a lifetime for you, don't take a chance that the boat's gonna have it. Bring it with you, that way you know that you're ready to go. The rods and reels, you can use theirs. What I like to do lots of time is bring my own reels. That way I know that the reels have fresh line on them and I'll just use the boat rods down there. All right, let's get back on the water and join Katie down the East Cape, show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. We had a marlin come up right behind the boat on one of the lures and I grabbed a drop, one of the drop back rigs with the live bait on it and put it back there. And it was only in the water about 30, 40 seconds, and the marlin saw it and came up and ate it. There, he's jumping again. Beautiful fish. Is that too hard? This is supposed to be the fun part. So I want Luke to have a little bit of fun. You know, it's a challenge for him with his sister. So we're trying to let him experience what it's like to catch a billfish too. That's a big, beautiful marlin. just caught his first marlin ever. He's out here fishing with his sister. Turn around real quick, get a photo. All right, we're gonna go ahead and release this guy real quick. All right. So Luke, how did it feel catch your first marlin? Hard. Hard? Did you like it? So it's good. Now, not only did your sister get a couple of marlin, now you got one all by yourself. You did a good job. Congratulations. All right, tell everybody stay tuned. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, nice job. Striped marlin is an offshore fish that lives in a wide range. 
typically found in warmer tropical waters of the Pacific Ocean. They are commonly found in waters south of Point Conception, California. Striped marlin can grow to be over 14 feet long with a world record weighing over 420 pounds. They feed primarily on smaller bait fish, but will also eat squid, crabs, and shrimp at times. Hey guys, today we're down the beautiful East Cape and we're in Los Corrales and uh, we're here for a special occasion to watch a bunch of sea turtles get released back into the ocean. This is a group here that does it. It's a nonprofit, local nonprofit that organizes it. This cage in here, they collect eggs all around the area. And part of the reason they do that is because there's so many forerunners and quad runners <laughs> going on the gone? beaches that they try to save those turtles by collecting the eggs. They bring them in a secured area here, they let them hatch, and then they release them out. So we're going to be part of it. And then you can see a bunch of little tiny turtles right here ready to go. So let's go see what it's like. These baby turtles here were just born last night, and uh, the guys are working together here to get them all ready to go to the ocean. And they have them in this protected area so that the turtles have a better chance to survive. Uh, some of the hotels down on the other side of Los Barrelas have uh, barriers on the beach to keep the quad runners from running on the beach, because those quad runners would run over and kill all these eggs. So groups like this, this nonprofit, go around, collect the eggs, bring them in a secure area like this and let them uh, be born and then they're going to release them. And we have a bunch of, I'm guessing Americans, here uh, watching the whole process, so it's kind of cool. Uh, we're a non-profit group. Um, it's called Grupo Tortuguero de los Barriles. So Tortuguero means people who work with turtles. Grupo, it's a group, group of people. people doing this um, this job. And most of them, my brother is the one who started this about six years ago. And I joined him four, four years ago. And since then we were just working. And plus nephews, uh, my wife, brothers, we all help a little bit. And so that we have a lot of volunteers who really like doing this. They come and help us. But it's totally a non-profit group. We don't, we don't get paid for doing this. Mm -hmm. This year we, we have got like 500 and we, I think we're gonna put back in the water. I think about 40,000 this year. Cool. cool. And it's one in a thousand who make it. So no. if we put in 40,000, that means we're pretty much saving 40, 40 turtles. 40 will make it to the adults. The adults, yes. It's a turtle that came last night and laid this nest. Had 98 eggs in it. I just got like down the down on the beach and this is how they look like and after 45 days we can have some baby turtles over here. They look like how many are you guys doing like 400? I think it, oh, the end is going to have about 500. 500? In the two buckets. So I only have 240 in this. You have 240 in this? We have 260 in this. So we are over 500. Yeah, you're over 500.
For this week's tip of the week, I really don't want to talk about the number of fish we caught, our techniques, how we caught them. We did have a great trip and we caught a number of marlin, so nice rooster fish, even a couple of jacks too. But this week's tip really is appreciate every moment in life, appreciate going fishing. As you saw in today's episode, today's episode wasn't about catching a monster sized fish, it was about providing an opportunity for a dream to come true, a girl's last wish. And all this girl wanted in her last wish of life was to catch a billfish. She wanted to catch a marlin. She'd seen a marlin in SpongeBob and she dreamed about it and she got all kinds of offers to go on all kinds of trips and she reached out to me about taking her marlin fishing. And I'm just really grateful and thankful that we were able to pull it off. We got her a couple of marlin. That first marlin, the, that fish of her uh, wish, you know, that she won her last wish, was the fish that she brought in all by herself. All I did really was hold the rod for her and she did it all on her own. She found the strength somehow to do it and she did it all by herself. So that's what this week's tip of the week is. Enjoy every moment, enjoy every moment on the water, enjoy your families and friends. And uh, I'm really thankful and grateful I got this opportunity to help this young lady, Katie, uh, get her last wish. I'd like to thank the Van Warmer family for making it all possible, helping us out with the, the rooms and the boats and everything. And uh, I know Katie had a great time, her family had a great time, her mother Casey keeps telling us the last couple of days how much fun her family's had, how much fun Katie had too. That's this week's tip of the week. Enjoy every moment because you don't know when it's going to be over. And I'm really grateful we're able to provide a last wish for a really young sweet girl. I'm Dan Hernandez hoping you enjoyed this very special episode of Sport Fishing and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.